I started at Backstage Academy in 2015. And the reason why I left MMU, a good friend of mine came over to Manchester and said, there's a really wonderful project over in Yorkshire called Backstage Academy. I said, I never heard of it. He said, it's in Wakefield. I said, never heard of it. <laughs> he said, you've got to come over. He said, we've been speaking about this for years. And literally, we have been speaking about this for years, where industry is connected to education. Not just talked about it, but it's actually connected. So I said, let's go for a drink. He bought me a bottle of champagne, got me drunk. And by the end of that conversation, I had agreed to go to, to, to Wakefield. And by that summer, I started in 2015 at Backstage Academy. And it is unique within the UK because it's born out of the industry. Most universities take on degree courses and they develop degree courses because they've seen other universities do it or they've seen a gap in the market. But this particular um, organization looked at the skills gap within their own sector, within the companies that existed within Production Park. And from that, they decided to start training young people. Uh, then, they then they decided that they needed validation. So they searched around the UK to find a university that would validate. And as you probably find out, a lot of universities didn't validate them because they were the industry. They weren't a, re a regulated university. But Bolton University said yes. Back in 2009, by 2011, they had their first degree course, which had been running and quite successful, uh, FDA and degree. When I arrived in 2015, they were in the second years of their visual design course. And it was quite, it was quite a sort of um, an, an awakening for me because, I, I, like I said, I've been talking about this for years and I wanted to see, see it in practice. And when I arrived there and I met the students on the visual design course, they were already working in industry in their first and second years. And they were working on international projects all over the world. I met one student in that summer, and in one month in the summer, he earned 11,000 pounds. That, that's not unique. The students at that, on that course and all the students on that course are working in industry. So we had to rewrite the course that summer when I arrived just to keep the students on the course because industry was dragging them out the door. So, so we sat down that summer, we re rewrote it, and we made it more industry focused. So all of their assessments and all of their clients come from industry on the visual design course. And now the numbers are stable. Students actually stay for the three years, and the students are employed to work on projects from the first year right through to their final year. And again, when I go and speak to the, to the lecturer uh, at, the, at the visual design course, and I say, where are your students? but I don't see them that much. And he gives me a list of places around the world, Azerbaijan, Singapore. He tells me that they're, they're in all, they're places all over the world, working with governments, working with um, kingdoms, uh, in the UAE, you name it. And these are students literally in their second year. It was, again, it was quite ironic because we have D3, Isadora, and all these other software programs that you probably know of and, and have heard of. And, and again, the, we purchased the D3 server for our students and it got to the point where the company who owns the, the software had our students as their troubleshooters. So when anybody rang up D3 and had an issue with D3, they came directly to our students who would tell the, their clients how to use the system. And that for me was, was, was a, 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 and again, another eye-opener because the, the teaching on that course and the development of the student's skills was was not just industry ready, they were advising clients who were using an industry, industry product within the, within the industry at, as, we, as we currently stand. So as we looked at all the courses at Backstage Academy, we decided to, again, not just rewrite the visual design course, we looked at the existing ones, including the one which I said started in 2011, and we found that we could make them, again, even more industry focused. Because Production Park delivers live events, and they deliver live events for, you name it, um, Adele, from Jay-Z to Beyonce. I think Beyonce just stayed, just left our, our production facility uh, two weeks ago. So any major artist that comes into Production Park and they require the skills of staging, automation, design, you name it, light and sound, testing, rigging, our students get directly into those um, companies and work with those um, clients, either on a part-time basis or they work on an ad hoc basis. They all get paid for it as well, so it's not just free labor. And we make sure that that's the case. Um, and it's 
and it's the living wage, not the, um, the minimum wage. So from our, from, our, from our point of view, by the time our students leave, they're already industry ready. Industry ready to the point that I'm teaching students now who are setting up their own companies and students who are delivering their own events while they're busy writing their dissertation. In fact, they're submitting their dissertation today online, which I've got to grade. But they're so far ahead of lots, so many other students that I've met across the UK and across Europe. As, as I said in my introduction, I've taught all over Europe and I've taught all over the UK. I've designed courses, managed courses, validated courses, and, and looking at the, the different skill sets that, re, uh, that is required and trying to convince universities to make their course more industry focused and bring in the technical aspects into their course. And that's what I love about Backstage, because they don't just talk about it, they do it. And I know it might sound like a PR speech from where I'm stood, but that's the reason why I left MMU. I had a really comfortable job. Um, it, it was a really comfortable job. It was 200 yards from my home. Um, I now drive a, a four hours a day, two hours there, two hours back to get to work. And I've been doing this for three years. So I must be committed to this project. <laughs> um, so, but it, but it is. But our students are different. And when we look at, I think, Andrew, you said it yesterday about disadvantaged young people. Wakefield it sits in a disadvantaged area. It's a working class area. Young people, I looked at some statistics just two or three weeks ago, 7,000 7, young people in, the, in Wakefield don't have education, employment, or training. So they're doing nothing, nothing at all. Then I looked at those statistics across the UK and I found that 1.5 million people in the UK in that age gap bracket are doing nothing. But when we look at those, those statistics, the government is basically saying, if you're a university provider, you must make an effort to bring those people into your institution. And it's called widening participation. So we have a, a duty as, as a, and a government remit to actively engage with that. So I looked at the profile of our students, and 86% of our current students fit within that profile. You know, they come from families, or relatively poor families, relatively poor areas. They may not have the attainment um, in terms of A-levels to get access, so we, they come through the FDA program, which is a foundation, but then after two years of that foundation, they can go straight to the final year of degree course. So again, I looked at statistics within the cultural industries, as they call it in the UK, and it said somewhere in the region of about 60% of people in the cultural industries have a degree or equivalent, where the UK economy has about 37% of people in various sectors with, with that. So it's a very highly qualified industry, extremely qualified industry in that sense, and in some areas more qualified than others. So I'm here principally to say to um, not just Sarah, because Sarah has a long history before, before I arrived with them through Adrian Brooks, who started Backstage Academy and Production Park, is that I look after the programs, I look after the academics, and I try to maintain the connection with the industry beyond Production Park, and to also look at quality and quality standard. We have our quality review process come in October, which is, a, it is called QAA. And my, my remit is to make sure that our programs fit within the national standards in all, everything that we do, and, it, we, and we get a good review. Without a good review, they could pull the plug on us. So it's absolutely important and imperative that we maintain that. And we, and we deliver programs that are applicable to the industry. So I know that um, through the relationship with SARA, they're looking at accreditation at a higher level, they're looking at quality, and they're looking at the, the international partnerships. And that's something which I've done as well, working with international partnerships, in not just, from, not just commercially, in different countries like Denmark, Sweden, France, Germany, and as was said earlier, in China, but also linking it to the, to the educational modules and the degree programs. So writing specific modules and specific degree programs that are applicable to the, to the students graduating, not just within those countries, but also, it, as you know, this is a global industry, so they can take their skill sets anywhere. So even though you didn't get a chance to see my presentation, <laughs> which the marketing recruitment department spent so much time on, um, it is available, and you can watch it at any time. In there, you'll see a, a number of video clips which are taken by the course leaders who give it a description of the actual program that we deliver. And like I said, it's, it's, it is my endeavor that with all these years of, of education and industry, because I still work in industry, 
that I can be of benefit to Sara and anyone else here who feels that they can take some of my skills forward. So I'll leave you with that and thank you very much.